Probably. Probably. Probably Monica. Yeah, what y'all gonna say? You I know okay, it's definitely. Say yeah. it. No, Probably. no, 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 Monica. No, no, don't parse words, Monica. Say it, Monica. I know you got to go in those locker rooms. Shannon's right. I know you cool with those women. Say it. So do me a favor and let me finish. Say I it. I got y'all. Okay. Okay. I'm not. Are you not gonna Go say it? I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk. Right. There is certainly <laughs> jealousy. There's certainly a reason to prove yourself. But if it is as bad as you all are now perceiving it to be, this team is 11 games in, and this is the first time we're having a conversation about a non-basketball play. If it as is as lethal and as nasty as the media has come to portray it. All I'm saying is, Kennedy Carter, her behavior is not indicative of the entire league. And the blanket no, statements are where this thing is going. Let me finish. The blanket statements are where this thing is going left. There are a ton of women in this league that are going to compete at a high level and be good sports in this thing. This is new territory for everyone involved. As far as the Matt Barnes and the Uncle Shannon conversation about getting into fights and altercations, you mentioned Angel Reese. Angel Reese has always had her teammates back to that degree. Aaliyah Boston has been walking this thing out with right. Caitlin Clark closely. I know that her teammates love her and appreciate her, but if it is not who they are to jump up and start a fight, then maybe they can't afford to lose game checks potentially, y'all. A game check in the NBA is what we're talking about in terms of salaries overall in the WNBA. So I think I would like you guys, and we all should do a better job of having a conversation with a little bit more nuance. We all agree Kennedy Carter was wrong. We all agree there is some jealousy. But to your no. point, Stephen A., it is, there is jealousy. There, to your point, it is still a prove-it league. What has been frustrating for those of us that have covered the league for years, you can go back to Candace Parker's rookie year. There's tape floating around on the internet. There has been physicality and welcome to the league moments. That's all. And so making a blanket statement about the women of this league is unfair. Is there jealousy? Yes. But is the league and are all of the players in the league hating on her? I do not think that that is accurate. And this is not a ballet well, for, performance. Well, first of all, if ever hold, on, an hold on, hold on, I mean, let go hold on. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie. So I wanted to give a reaction. You guys know I come down hard on the WNBA. Mostly because I think, you know, I've seen their attitudes, the way they complain. And I just, you know, I just think it's unwarranted. They, again, I call it, it's a welfare league. They, you know, they are unable to sustain themselves. They have no fan base and they blame men. They blame men for, you know, why don't you support? Why don't you? Men are the majority support for the WNBA, but they don't call out women. And then when you have people like Jamel Hill and others that talk about, you know, in Sonny Houston, that, you know, someone has white privilege and someone has straight privilege and someone has tall privilege, it's just ridiculous. So they're going to get a lot of negative press. So if they want to clean up their image or they want people to stop, you know, putting that out there, then they need to speak to these people, you know, who are not advocating for them in the best light. They just seem like a bunch of crybabies, a bunch of butch masculine women who just can't, who, who cosplay as men who cannot take the criticism, cannot take any type of constructive feedback about what they should do to improve the game. And especially if it's coming from a man, they have these rants against men. So those are the things that get the headlines. But I will say, I feel as though I'm going to be, un, I'm going to be fair in this. What she's saying is if it's true and I the, the footage I just saw, Yes, it seems like rookies are going to get, you know, bullied. They're going to get tried. They're going to get tested. The difference here is that all the chatter around Caitlin Clark is obvious. The obvious jealousy, the obvious things that have been said about her, the obvious things that have been done. And then when people see things like that, and we know she's not getting supported, I haven't heard anybody from the WNBA come out in support of her. It's very, you know, it, it's, they brush it off. It's just negativity. She's not that special. She's not this, she's not that. And they're not understanding that she is their golden goose. All we're getting from them is that they, they, it is racist rhetoric and also a lot of crybaby language. So while she, what she's saying is true, she has to understand that they have more eyeballs on them now. They have a new opportunity to build a fan base, but they're not, they're squandering that because they, the, the things that they've done in the past, it's not working. And, and, and they keep wanting to do that bullying the new rookie and all that. If it works so much and it works so well, then your numbers will be up, boo. You would have more money in your pocket. The league would not be on welfare. And it does not help your image to come across as a bunch of mean, aggressive biatches who, who, you know, who are stubborn and egotistical. It's just not working. So it's time to change your formula. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. No, no. We got to have time. We got to have time to respond, Monica. 
Do you? We gotta have time to respond to you, because you're saying a lot. You got. You're saying a lot. You're saying. You're saying a lot. You're saying. It's. Excuse me. First of all, nobody said oil. All. That's number one. No, number actually, two. A lot of people have said we oil, said to you, don't. Uh, 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 we we said to you, don't say probably. That's all we said. We said okay. we said I'm say, not it. say we, probably, It's not probably. Not it's, that's all. all we did. Hey guys, can you guys hold up? Can you guys put me on camera for one second, please? Can you guys put me on camera for one second, please? Everybody's talking over each other. Everybody's in different studios, and we have delays. Can everyone just finish their thought? And then, like, it's hard to do the back and forth when we're all in different places. So you're all talking at the same time. Is there a reason why she's even on a show? Like, do they actually need some airhead to just sit there and like, hey, guys, I'm your teacher. You're not adults. I need everybody to wrangle themselves and behave and, and to do, like, what is her purpose on these shows? I, I don't get it. Is she supposed to be eye candy? Like, like what, what, someone help me understand. I, maybe I'm, I'm ignorant. I just know she's been on this show for years and she seems to, she adds nothing but this robotic Vanna White type of thing. And maybe I'm hating, I guess that's what people call hating, but it just doesn't, is it supposed to draw on a female audience or do men just like looking at her? Are y'all that thirsty? Y'all are that thirsty. Okay, y'all are thirsty. And I can't understand anything that you're saying so the viewers at home can't either. And that you're saying so the viewers at home can't either. I understood everything that was said, ma'am. What are you talking about? Stephen A, go ahead. Go ahead, Stephen A. Oh, just so you know, I had to download this from somewhere else. That's why it's looking like this, so I don't get a copyright. The point, Monica, is this. The jealousy, it's not about all. It's about the fact that it's been very pronounced from the time she's arrived. And that doesn't mean all, but that means a lot of it is legit. And when you talk about leading this show, no, it ain't the media. What happens is the people have been speaking about it all week and long. So we're paying right. attention to what the people are talking about. That's what makes us determine what we want to talk about. If somebody is talking about something else far more than this incident, we would have led with that. We led with this because that's what everybody has been talking about. Now, what you have to ask yourself, Eminem, is this. Over this weekend, as this was pervasive throughout social media and beyond, why was that the case? If the WNBA, the WNBA has been in existence for over 22 years, why is but it you, that this particular weekend, just because of a hip check, that everybody is talking about it on social media? Why would they do that, Monica? Because it is a hot topic, and Caitlin Clark has brought new eyes to the game. I'm fully aware, Stephen. Oh, ho, oh, oh, hold on. So when that play, when that Clark. play happened with, hold, when that play happened with Candace Parker. That was a basketball play trying to box out. Did anybody talk about that on TV the next morning or the next morning or the next? It's a simple, Monica, I like to do simple yes or no, not the nuance because you want to go nuance because you're ready. You see what you try to do is get away with it with nuances. Did they talk about it? It's a simple yes or simple no. No. So what we're seeing is that the New York Liberty had a $2 million gate against a fever game. Had they had another $2 million gate before or or before or since? It's a simple yes or no, Monica. I actually don't know that one. I'm gonna go no based on where okay. you're going. Okay, how about this? The Sparks had a game in which uh, fever, Caitlin Clark and her team showed up and they had more in attendance than a Laker game. Have the Sparks had more in attendance before or after? Yes or no, Monica? No. So you see this is a has a lot, and I get it, the jealousy. I, I'm in the media. I remember when P. Mac got that big old deal. I didn't get mad, because I say, you know what? He came from the digital space. You know what? Maybe ESPN are like that more enough. They hit your boy up with a deal like that. Let me see what he did. That's how I look at Monica. I ain't finna hate exactly. on him. I'm finna get like him so and get me a big deal. Honestly, this is the reason why the majority of men, uh, you know, of billionaires and millionaires are men. One of the things a lot of times men have to earn their value in life. Men have to earn their way. They know this from a young age. It, it, they have to 
find a way to succeed. They're not born with intrinsic value. Women are born with intrinsic value because they are women, because they are, they control sex, because women are have wombs. Women are used to being able to ride off of either looks or somebody, the government, somebody's gonna feel sorry for them and help them, or a man is gonna bail them out. Men know there is no point in just being jealous. A man can be jealous, or it, it's really the word envious. They can be envious, they can feel spiteful, they can feel resentful, but there's nowhere to put it. Nobody wants to hear a man, you know, uh, bemoan and cry and it's not fair. And even when guys do it, a lot of, you know, they get clowned, even when athletes do it, they get clowned by other men. Like shut up and just do your job, shut up and get it done. Men know this, but women for some reason, a lot of these WNBA players think because uh, they feel as though they deserve it and because it's unfair, you know, it, 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 it just should be, it just should exist. They don't have to do more. They don't have to look at another formula and try to market themselves or fit in with it, you know, get in where they fit in. They want to be the head. They want to, you know, it, it's kind of, this is why you see there's clicks. This is why girls from a young age form cliques and there's a head girl in the clique and they have these little groups and gossip and while women watch these reality shows where women are fighting and there's a leader of the pack, women, they're used to this, this pecking order of women. Men, even if they're okay with understanding that there is a king, but they know there's a place for them, there's a role for them to get in where they fit in. Even if there is a king, yeah, there's some guys who are gonna be competitive and try to knock a guy off, yes, but they're not complaining and being a crybaby to the top. They are just putting in the hard work, putting their head down and trying to learn and understand. This is why most men run businesses are CEOs. But you see when women are in charge, it's like this, this ego trip that we, we <laughs> yes, but we, not everybody, and they, but you can see the difference in logic. And this is why women have, we have held ourselves back. It's not men holding us back. It is men actually have given women an opportunity, especially with the WNBA, because again, the NBA subsidizes them. The majority of the people who buy tickets for the WNBA are men. Okay, so we need to keep that in mind. I'm saying with uh, with with with, with, with the with the P Max and all of that other stuff. Listen, I'm watching P Max. I'm watching Shannon. I'm watching everybody. I'm looking at them. I'm at the advice that I'm giving it to the WNBA players. I'm following. I am very appreciative of the market that the Pat McAfee's <laughs> and the Shannon Sharps of the world and others have set. Oh, Stephen A's watching. I'm loving it. I'm not mad. I can't be happier. I couldn't be happier. They're setting the market. Caitlin Clark is doing that for these. WNBA players reap it and benefit okay. off of it. That's Monica, all I'm saying. Monica, get in here. Thank you, Molly. I don't want. He couldn't even finish what he's saying. She has to keep jumping in. And I understand that, that the guys may do this, but this is the, his show. This is their show. She can't just, she's not listening to understand. She's not listening to, you know, really, you know, see where they're coming from. She just wants to counterpoint and, and put something else out there or correct herself so it's not as bad as what she's saying. I could be wrong because I'm doing the same thing here, but that's my job to commentate on these things. So I'm different. I'm not like the other girls. I didn't want to step over the audio. Okay, so listen, y'all. <laughs> I am not saying that the WBA doesn't have to acknowledge that Caitlin Clark's influence is rising this thing up, right? But Shannon, to go yes. back to your example, you mentioned PMAC, the new deal set reset in the marketplace. Let's just go back to you as a football player, right? Yes. Your position, yes. tight end, got paid. Yes. Shannon, yes. you honestly mean to tell me that if when your team has the opportunity to play, I mean, I know football, we got offense, defense, but if your team had yeah. the opportunity to play the next big thing, they wouldn't have your back and the competition might not be a little bit more yes. juice. Is that what you're trying to tell yes. me? All right, then, what are we talking no, about? No, 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 what I'm saying, Monica, I'm not going to try, if, let's just say for the sake of argument, I'm going up against a top, a top linebacker. And he's a rookie, okay. and he got this big, uh -huh. he got this big payday. I'm not gonna cheap shot him. I'm gonna do my best to block him. I'm gonna try to show him up in the passing game. I'm gonna try to catch passes, touchdowns, first down against him. And then I'm not gonna shove him. I'm not gonna do all that little shady stuff. But I promise you, I'm gonna get you back. But I'm not gonna make it look like it's deliberate. I'm gonna get you back within a play of a game. I got my teammates okay. back. Oh, you best believe it. Right. So, so, so what I'm saying to y'all is I think there is more, there has been more within the allowed play of basketball outside of this play by Kennedy Carter. Kennedy Carter, clearly okay. there's, some, there's jealousy there. 
right? But also, when you look at her history, she's not been the Sportswoman of the Year. And so all I'm saying is that this particular play should not be indicative of how the entire league feels. That's the part that has been really frustrating to watch this evolve. Kaylin is going to be okay. She's going to be great in this league. And this probably will not be allowed going forward because you're right, it's not a basketball play. And as far as her teammates having her back, if those women are not fighters before they became her, she became their teammate, that's not going to change instantly. They do have their back in the best way that they know how. It's not quite the same where Matt Barnes could have been an enforcer and can afford to toss out a game check. Like, it's not the same thing. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, sure. The blanket statements have yeah, been sure. unfair. Hey, Monica, you remember when Cardosa, when she slung down Flajay Johnson? Haley Van mm -hmm. Lip, all the 5152. She shoved Cardosa. Again, that's up. part of Haley Van Lip's DNA, the... <laughs> which, which is what I'm saying to you. It's, it's the fact that who that happened, Stephen A., you remember when they changed the rule when Tom Brady got his knee sh shredded? He got hit in the pocket. Just, what, eight years earlier, Trent Green suffered that same injury, and they didn't do a thing. They didn't change the rule. The rules normally get changed when who it happens to. This happened to Caitlin Clark. It's not the same if somebody had a hip check Carter, you know that anybody else is not the same, Monica. There's a different set of rules. We understand Listen, that. La la last, last couple of comments. Number one, you know, somebody just reminded me about how what Michael Jordan went through when he first came into the league. And you're yes. talking about a league, the vast majority of players are black, and even Michael Jordan came into the league. And, and you had teams like the Pistons and others that were trying to put him through hell because they weren't going to relent to it. But then you saw some of the rule changes that were incorporated. You know why? Because the league deduced that the brand of basketball that was being played that negated and neutralized the greatness of a Michael Jordan wasn't necessarily beneficial to the Beneficial. overall product and the financial stability of the league. And so all of a sudden, stuff was implemented. Now, obviously, that's a bit extreme compared to what we're talking about with Caitlin Clark. But what I'm trying Correct. to say is that from an historical perspective, use things as an advantage to really, really piggyback off of and learn. All right, guys, so that's enough of this conversation. But to me, this is the right take on this. What they're saying is it's they don't want to evolve. They think all the players think of themselves as equal, and they are not. There is a hierarchy. Caitlin Clark is the most valuable player that the league has because why? She is the most popular. Is she the most pretty? Is she the prettiest? No, I actually went through, and I because I always call them butch and masculine, I tried to find women who were more feminine, and I actually may do a video of, you know, women who are more feminine in the league. Now, I would just like them because they, they look more feminine. I like how they behave. And it's shocking to me that there are women who don't, you know, present as these masculine, you know, wildebeests, which is what the image, the majority images. Now, they may not be as good at basketball, but I'm I'm willing to give it a try. They're like Cameron Brink. And then there's, I, I think the LA, is it the LA Sparks? I think it is. I've seen a lot of women on, it's a few women, not a lot, a few women on that team that I think, you know, I, I wouldn't mind taking my daughter to go see them because I feel as though they look more feminine. They seem, you know, like role models are not, I, I don't feel like my, my daughter is going to be watching a bunch of men, you know, women cosplay as men and being a certain way. So maybe, but at the same time, will it be as entertaining? No. So one of the things they have to understand is the league has to evolve. The WNBA has to evolve. And a lot of them just think it should be just the standard practice that they've always had. The rules need to change. The game needs to change. And they have been so resistant on it. They play with the smaller ball, but they don't want to lower the net. That would make the games more entertaining. They don't want to shorten the court. That would make the games more entertaining. They don't want to do things to actually make the games more entertaining. One of the things I see they're trying to do is dress up the women like before the games and things and and come out a certain way. Some of them look like, again, like they just, they're walking, they're going to the nightclub. It just looks like some hoe gear while others are dressed nicely, but they're going to have to reformulate what they're doing. And that's overall what needs to happen. And one of the issues that a lot of women like her have is that how come it's not covered? How come no one talked about it? How come, because no one cared. It, like people want to watch what's popular. You are entertainment. No one owes you eyeballs. Nobody owes you support. None of these men owe you anything. If nobody's watching your games, if you are a dying league, if you are a bankrupt league, 
like it, that means that people are not interested. They're not drawn to your product. You have to come up with something new, reformulate, recalculate. It's not owed to you just because you're doing it. You are a disposable, uh, you are a disposable market. No one needs women's basketball. Okay. If we have a choice to choose entertainment, if we're, you know, if I'm a woman, am I going to choose to go to a WNBA game or pay a little more and go to uh, not pay a lot more? Actually, I'd rather pay a lot more and go to an NBA game. It's just, it's more entertaining. It's more fun. It's more involved. I, I'm, I'm more invested in things like that. And I'm not even a basketball fan, but I, I it would just, I would just feel it is it, like going to WNBA game. It's just not there. So they're going to have to up the entertainment value somehow and, and, and ride this golden goose, Caitlin Clark, if they want any hope of this league surviving. But if they decide to keep treating her like, like, you know, second class and she's just an average rookie and they want to, you know, then they have all these other people talking about she's, you know, she's white privilege and all these other things. If you want to go down that route, route, you're going to alienate the majority of fans that she has brought with her into the league. So guys, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this and I will see you on the next one.